can you just because it sounded really cool uh talk a little bit about stochastic coalescence and uh you have a paper on showing that something you could describe what it is but i guess it's uh, super linear, super logarithmic time, and you came up with some kind of trick that make it faster. You just Can you just talk about it a little bit? Yeah. So this was something which came up um, when I was at Microsoft Research for a summer. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm putting that context because that shows that it has some practical motivation at some point. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think it's still... It doesn't need to. Yeah. It doesn't need to. It can be beautiful and it's all right. Yeah. So, so the easiest way to describe this is, suppose you got like a big crowd of people and everybody knows how many hours of sleep they got last night. Mm -hmm. And you want to know how many total hours of sleep were gotten by this big crowd, big crowd of people. At the beginning, you might say, that sounds like a linear time algorithm of saying, hey, you, how many hours you got? How many you got? How many you got? Add, add, add. Yes. But there's a way to do this. If you remember that they're all people and they presumably know how to add, you could make a distributed algorithm mm -hmm. to make this happen. For example, while we're thinking of these trees, imagine you had 1,024 people. Mm -hmm. If you could just say, hey, person number one and person number two, you will add your hours of sleep. Person number two will go away and person number one is going to remember the sum. Mm -hmm. Person three and four add up mm -hmm. and person three takes charge of remembering it. Mm -hmm. Person four goes away. Now this like person one knows the sum of these two. Person three knows the sum of those two. They talk. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's like you're going up this tree, same tree that we talked about earlier. Built up a tree from the bottom up. <laughs> yeah, build a tree from the bottom up. And the beautiful thing is, since everyone's doing stuff in parallel, the amount of time it takes to get the total sum is actually just the number of layers in the tree, mm -hmm. which is 10. Mm -hmm. So now that's logarithmic time to add up the number of hours that people slept today. Sounds fantastic. Yes. There's only one problem. How do you decide who's person number one and person number two? <laughs> yes. So if, if, for example, you just went out into the downtown and said, hey, get these thousand people, go. Well, if you're going to go and say, and by the way, you're one and you're two and you're three, that's linear time. Yes. You, that's cheating. So, yes. so now the question is how to do this in a distributed way. And there were some people who proposed a very elegant algorithm and they wanted to analyze it. That's, mm -hmm. So I came in onto the analyze side. But the elegant algorithm was like this. It was like, well, we don't actually know what this big, nut, big, big tree is. There isn't any big tree. So what's going to happen is first, uh, everyone is going to decide right now Oh, what, one important thing. Everyone is going to, at the very beginning of the whole game, uh, they will have delegated responsibility to themselves as the one who knows the sum so far. So, so, so the point is there's, there's going to be, people are all going to have like a pointer which says, uh, you are the one who knows my, you, you've taken care of mm -hmm. my ticket, my number. Yeah, okay? they select a representative, representative. For, 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 for this particular piece of knowledge. Right. Yep. And at the very beginning, you're your own representative. The yes. thing has to start simple, right? So at the beginning, you're under represent. <laughs> you're pointing to yourself. Yep. Got it. Yep. And, and, and now the way this works is that at every time step, someone blares a ding dong on the on the on the town clock or whatever. Yes. And each person flips a coin themselves to decide: Am I going to hunt for somebody to give my number to mm -hmm. and let them represent me, or am I going to sit here and wait for someone to come? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, they they flip their coin. Some of the people start asking other people, saying, hey, I, I would like you to be um, my representative. Here is my number. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that there's limited bandwidth of the people who are getting asked. It's mm -hmm. like you can't, get, you can't go out to prom with five people. <laughs> that, this is not the, what we're doing. We're adding numbers, okay? <laughs> yeah. But you can only add one number. Yeah. So the person who has suddenly gotten asked by all these people, well, they'll have to decide who they're going to take it from. Mm -hmm. And they randomly just choose one. Mm -hmm. When they randomly choose one, all the others are rejected and they don't get to delegate anything in that round. But now if this person has absorbed this one who said, okay, here, you take charge of my number, this person now updates their pointer, you're, you're in charge, mm -hmm. and this person adds the two numbers. That was the first round. Mm -hmm. In the next round, when they do the coin flipping, this person doesn't flip anymore mm -hmm. because they're just delegating. Mm -hmm. It's that anyone who has the pointer to themselves, that's a, a, like a, a person who is in charge of some number of informations, they flip the coin to decide, should I find other people who are agents mm -hmm. or should I wait for people to ask me? Yes, brilliant. This is somebody else's idea. And, and, and now the idea is, okay, if you just keep doing this process, what ends up happening? Oh yeah, oh, and also by the way, if you decide that you want to go reach out to other people, here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the catch. When you're one of these agents saying, okay, I'm going to go look for someone. You have no idea who in this crowd is an agent 
or somebody who delegated it to someone else. Right. You just pick a random person. When you pick the random person, if it lands on someone and the person says, oh, I, I actually delegated it to someone, mm -hmm. then you you, you follow you walk the point. Up you walk the, up the delegation chain. Walk up delegation chain. And you can do like path compression mm -hmm. in the algorithm to make it so you don't consistently do lots of walking up. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that what ends up happening is that you end up reaching out whenever you're one of the ones reaching out. You can think of it as each agent is responsible for some number of people. It's almost like they're the leader of a bunch. As the process is evolving, you have these lumps. Each lump has an agent. Mm -hmm. And when the agent reaches out, they reach out to another lump where the probability of them hitting that lump is proportional to the size of the lump. Yeah. That is the one funny thing about this process. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is not that they can reach out to a uniformly random lump where every lump has the same chance of getting oh, reached see. out to. Yeah. The bigger the lump is, the less li the, the more likely it is that you end up reaching that lump. Which is a problem? Let me explain why that's a problem. Because you see, you're hoping that this has a small number of steps, yeah. but here's a bad situation that could happen. Imagine if you had like, there are n people that you're adding up. Imagine that you have exactly square root of n lumps left, mm -hmm. of which almost all of them are just one person who's still their own boss, mm -hmm. their own their own manager. Except one giant one. Giant one. Yeah. Now what's gonna happen? That's it's gonna be good. a huge bottleneck because every <laughs> round the giant one can only absorb one of the others. Yes. And now you suddenly have time, which is about square root of n. Mm -hmm. uh, the square root of n is chosen because that is one where the, the, the lumps are such that um, you really are limited by this large one slowly sucking up the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So the the heart of the question became, well, but is that just so unusual that we don't that it doesn't usually happen? Because remember, you start with everyone just yes. being independent. It's like a lot of lumps of size one. Yeah, how naturally do the big lumps emerge? Yes. And so what that heart of the proof was was showing that that was a joint work with Al Lebetsky. That one was showing that uh, actually in that thing the lumps do kind of get out of whack. And so it is not the purely logarithmic number mm. of steps, but if you make one very slight change, which is if you are one of the um, agents and you have just been propositioned, possibly relayed along by a couple of different people, if you just say, don't take a random one, but accept the smallest lump, mm. that actually does enough to even the whole thing up. the lump size. Yep. That's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fascinating how with the distributed algorithms, a little adjustment yes. <laughs> can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Actually, by the way, this does, this back to our voting conversation, this makes me think of like, these networking systems are so fascinating to study. They, they immediately spring to mind ideas of how to have representation. Like I, maybe as opposed to me voting for a president, I want to vote for, for like, uh, for you, Paul, to represent me, maybe on a particular issue, and then you will delegate that further, and then we naturally construct those kinds of networks because that, that feels like I can have a good conversation with you and figure out that you know what you're doing, and I can delegate it to you, and that in that way construct a representative government, a representative decision maker. That feels that feels really nice as opposed to like us like a tree of height one or something where it's like everybody's just um it feels like there's a lot of room for layers of representation to form organically from the bottom up. I wonder if there are systems like that. This is the cool thing about the internet and the digital space where we're so well connected, just like with uh, the Novid app to to distribute information about the, the 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 spread of the disease. We can in the same way, in a distributed sense, form anything like uh, any kind of knowledge bases that are formed in a decentralized way and uh, in a hierarchical way, as opposed to sort of old way where there's no mechanism for large scale, fast, uh, tr tr like distributed transactional information. This is really interesting. This is where almost like net network graph theory becomes practical. <laughs> yeah. M most of that exciting work was done in the 20th century, but most of the application will be in the 21st, which is cool to think about.